I'm going to use one of your classmates' work to debrief class exercise 2. Okay, so right now, let us look at 1A. 1A, right, you are actually asked to choose from the, the list uh, given to illustrate um, two theories. So um, for 1A, it will be bronsted lowry theory. For 1B, it will be the Lewis acid base theory. So if you look at the three compounds given to you, you have BF3, um, ammonia, and H2O. For bronsted lowry theory, you focus on H, which is um, protons. Okay, because um, if you if you slowly look at the definition for bronsted lowry theory, we are looking at a proton donor or proton acceptor. Okay, so in this case, I think uh, it's it's relatively straightforward that um, uh, going by what you have learned in secondary school, uh, ammonia here will act as a weak base, so it will accepts a protons from H2O. Okay, so uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you just do a simple write-up, uh, I think that would be sufficient. So in this case, uh, the student wrote that um, the ammonia accepted a proton um, from water. I think that's fine. And then, uh, therefore, uh, H2O is what we call the bronze lowry acid. Okay, and then um, in, in our case here, ammonia is the bronze lowry base because uh, it accepts a proton and H2O donates a proton, so therefore uh, H2O is a uh, bronze acid. Okay, so that's fine. And then uh, with a balance equation. But um, the only issue I have with uh, some of your balance equation is you wrote it as NH4OH. Right, take note that um, NH4OH um, should not be written in this form, it should be written as NH4 uh, plus. Uh, plus OH minus. Okay, because if you write it as NH4OH, you are implying that ammonium hydroxide actually existed um, um, in, 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 in a way where uh, it is like a fully ionized solution. Okay, uh, but this is uh, further from the truth. It's not the case. Okay, so in this case, um, ammonia is actually a weak base uh, that partially ionized. So uh, the better description uh, for aqueous ammonia is actually aqueous ammonia. You shouldn't be called ammonium hydroxide. So just take note of this. So you should write it as NH4OH rather than, or, or rather you should write it as um, NH4 plus plus OH minus rather than um, NH4OH. Just take note of this. Okay, so the next part, we are looking at the Lewis uh, acid-base theory. As you know that the Lewis acid-base theory focus on um, whether a species is an electron pair donor so that makes it um, a Lewis base or whether is it an electron pair acceptor so that makes it a Lewis acid and of course um, from chemical bonding some of you recognize that um, BF3 the boron center in this case having six electrons around it we say that it is electron deficient so it being electron deficient means that it is a good uh, electron pair acceptor so that makes uh, BF3 a Lewis acid and then um, accepts the electrons for ammonia. And on the other hand, ammonia is a Lewis base, so therefore it accepts a lone pair of electrons, or rather it donates a lone pair of electrons to BF3. Okay, so with this, uh, you can write a balance equation like that. Uh, take note that usually for adducts like this, right, uh, meaning um, a coordinated compound that's formed for Lewis, a Lewis acid and Lewis base, we normally write it as BF3 with a dot in the middle, and then um, NH3. Okay, so this is the usual way you write it. But it is perfectly fine if you write it the way uh, this particular student wrote, like BF3, NH3. Okay, then the next part um, we'll be looking at will be question two. So for question two, right, uh, it's mentioned that in the pure liquid states, uh, water and ammonia undergoes auto-ionization. So this is a reaction between a uh, molecule in the same substance to produce ions. Okay, so if you just look at these two equations, let's call them equation A and equation B. So if you notice, for equation A, right, the water acts as both the electron... Uh, okay, you can look at it from the perspective of a bronsted acid or bronsted base. It doesn't really matter. 
Okay, really, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, um, you notice that water itself donates a proton. So one water molecule donates a, a proton to another water molecule. That's why you are able to produce a H3O plus and OH minus. Okay, and so therefore, uh, we will say that one is correct because uh, water behaves as a bronsted acid. Okay, but um, if you look at it from another perspective, the water, right, with its lone pairs of electrons, also accepts, okay, uh, H from another water through its electron pair. So can you see? It looks something like that. So the lone pair accepts the H from the other water molecules, and then in this case, the OH sigma bond will break towards the O. So in some sense, the water also behaves as a Lewis base. Okay, so using the same logic, ammonia donates one ammonia molecule, actually donates a proton to another ammonia molecule to form um, NH2 minus. Okay, so that makes it a proton donor and the other molecule as a proton um, acceptor. So that makes ammonia a Lewis base. And because the ammonia accepts a H from the other ammonia molecule and through its lone pairs of electrons, so that makes it an electron pair donor. So in this case, ammonia is also behaving as a Lewis base. Okay, so um, when you analyze it this way, all the options are correct. So therefore, D is the correct answer. Okay, yeah. For question three, I noticed that uh, there is a huge uh, improvement uh, from the previous exercise one. Um, I think that's very good. So I'll keep up the good effort. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just do a very quick debrief. So you have this um, mineral known as uh, xerotite. So bright emerald green nickel too. Um, I think this statement is important here. So it means that it contains nickel 2 plus. Okay. Carbonate minerals with uh, this particular um, uh, molecular formula. So you were told that uh, upon heating 0 0.05 moles of it decomposed to give um, three things. Uh, it gives you nickel oxide. NiO, it gives you CO2, and it gives you water vapor. Okay, then you were also told that the nickel oxide formed upon the decomposition reaction was completely neutralized by 100 cubic centimeters of a uh, relatively concentrated 3.6 moles per decal HCl. And obviously, this is in excess. So you can view it this way you can view it that um, I have this whole amount of HCl, okay, and then uh, part of it reacted with uh, H nickel oxide, okay, reacted with nickel oxide, okay, and then uh, you have remaining excess HCl, which is uh, indicated, let me indicate it in, it's in blue here, so these are the excess um, unreacted HCl and then uh, because the HCl is too concentrated what the student did was uh, this portion was being transferred into a 250 cubic centimeters um, volumetric flask and then top it out with water so this is transferred into a 250 cubic centimeters volumetric flask top it out with, with water and then uh, the student took out 25 cubic centimeters from this, from this 250 cubic centimeters volumetric flask. Okay, so remember that later you have to scale. Yeah, so the scaling is important. Uh, and then uh, you were told what is the volume of sodium hydroxide you require for complete neutralization. So it's written out here. Okay, yeah. So, um, so it's a relatively straightforward stoichiometry. We call this... Um, a back titration. Okay, so the student, uh, okay, as as usual, uh, did a quick quick calculation to find out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide required for complete neutralization. Okay, so remember that significant figures is important. Um, remember to put your zeros at the back. If you don't want to put zeros, you should leave your answer in standard forms. I think I mentioned this a few times. I still see a lot of students write your answer as zero point zero zero six moles. Okay, so this is a no no. So please take note of it, right? 
And then um, after that, the students scale it back to 250. Okay, so, um, so based on this. Okay, so good. So multiply by 10, or you can say uh, multiply by 250 divided by 25.0. So uh, you notice that the number of zero decreases by one. So this is correct. And then in order to find out the number of moles of HCl that reacted with nickel oxide, you find out the amount of HCl present in the concentrated version. Okay, and then you subtract it all. So um, you take the difference and then uh, it's 0 0.36 minus 0 0.06. So that's 0 0.300 moles. Okay, so um, with this, uh, where can we go from here? Okay, so if you if you actually move down um, a little bit um, to look at the, the ratio. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see where, where was it written. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, based on this particular equation, based on this particular equation, you realize that nickel oxide and HCl reacted in a 1 is to 2 ratio. Okay, so what the students did was... Um, um, he or she found that the nickel oxide and HCl is a 1 is to 2 ratio. So, so based on this, um, 1 is to 2 ratio, uh, divide by 2, and then therefore, uh, he or she concluded that, that um, the number of moles of um, nickel oxide is therefore 0 0.150, which is uh, half that of the number of moles of HCl. And earlier on, uh, you were told that the number of moles of uh, xerotype is uh, 0 0.05, so if you if you just uh find out the stoichiometric ratio, that's one is to three. Okay, and if you do a quick look at this particular uh reaction, right? Um the minerals contains um a few elements, nickel, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, but it but all the nickels get converted to nickel oxide. So therefore, uh you can quickly conclude that um therefore the number of moles of um, nickel oxide is equivalent to the number of moles of nickel that's originally present. So from here, the students concluded that x is equal to 3. Okay, so that's a quick conclusion. Okay, and then what I noticed, which is uh, re really quite interesting, is that um, many of you tried to write a balanced equation uh, involving the decomposition of xerotite uh, into nickel oxide, CO2, and H2O, and then uh, you end up with something... Um, something like this, like this particular student shown. You do by inspection and then uh, you, you wrote a balanced uh, portion here and then you compare the oxygen, you compare the hydrogens and then finally you get um, Y equals to 4. I think this is very, very good um, effort um, from many of you. Um, really, I, I, I felt it's good effort. However, uh, uh, I felt that this is too complicated um, a way of doing it. Uh, there is actually a much easier way to solve this. Um, so if you look at this formula, right, you will remember earlier on I mentioned that nickel is already in a plus two oxidation state. Um, and you are probably probably aware what carbonate is from secondary school. Carbonate has an oxidation, I mean, has a charge of two minus. Okay, and you know that nickel obviously has a charge of uh, uh, plus 2, and you know what X is, okay? And most importantly, you know that uh, this whole chunk here is neutral. So with that, uh, we could easily set up um, a charge balance equation, right? So that means that since we know that X is um, um, 3, then the charge um, provided by nickel will, be, will therefore be plus 2 multiplied by 3. And then um, the amount of Carbonate I have here is 1. Okay, so therefore, um, the charge provided by carbonate is... Oops, sorry. The charge provided by carbonate is actually uh, minus 2. And then now, the only unknown is Y. And OH uh, here, I think uh, it needs no introduction. Uh, OH is actually hydroxide, so the charge uh, is minus 1. So uh, in this case, um, minus 1 times uh, Y, so minus 4Y. And um, this is equals to zero. Okay, right. Okay, I hope I'm. Oh, sorry, not minus four y. Okay, I sorry, sorry, made a huge mistake here. So um, this is actually minus y. Yeah, because the charge of OH is minus one. Okay, so once you set up this equation, um, you shift y 
as the subject, and then you get y equals to 4. And that's about it. Okay, so uh, uh, a very quick, uh, a very short way to do this is really by charge balanced. Uh, many of you went on to do the balancing and then you compare the O's on both sides. I think uh, that method is a little bit uh, more complicated because uh, you need to ensure that um, the balance equation you have written is correct. So that might be a little bit, um, I mean, um, on the difficult side for exam because sometimes uh, you will make unnecessary mistakes.